Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome back to the channel Football Therapy with me, your host, Yan. Chelsea remain in the trenches, and while we do remain in the trenches, I'm going to remain in the dark abyss. So welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Chelsea News. Of course, the big headlines are, who's going to be in the hot seat at Chelsea Football Club? And boy, that seat is so hot that you won't... I was going to say something really gross, but I'm going to refrain from saying that. It's a really hot seat, and there's obviously... Loads of negativity around the club, understandably, at the moment. You've got fans shouting at Todd Bowley at Stamford Bridge. Sort of a, not just a level of disappointment, kind of like apathy at this point. Anyway, Chelsea are looking at different coaches. It is an exhaustive process. We've had all sorts of things, like Luis Enrique is disappointed with the manager search, how we gave Lampard the interim job rather than getting him in straight away, which I thought was kind of weird, but we move. Apparently, he's been offered um, international jobs, this is Fabrizio Romano, but surely Luis Enrique does not want to, I mean, like, I'm not, I'm sure he enjoyed managing Spain, but he wants a club job, that's what, like, Ornstein and loads of reputable journalists saying, that he wants to get back into club football, and he wants to work in the Premier League, so I'm sure he'll get offered jobs. All over the gap! I'm going to read what David Ornstein's column is saying to fill us in, and also talk about... Some difficult news in terms of the situation we have to deal with. Thank you for joining me. Uh, do consider doing the interactions, like likes and comments. I read the comments on every video, and it's nice. I enjoy it. So please do consider commenting. And of course, you're welcome to subscribe as well. Dear sweet newcomers, I'm messing this thing up. Yes, okay, cool. Right, um, before we talk about David Ornstein's column, giving us an update on the manager situation at Chelsea... According to um, Gazzetta dello Sport, the Italian publication, they are looking for a Romelu Lukaku replacement. They have decided not to extend his loan for a further year, if we are to believe this uh, news publication in, in Italia. Um, I, you know, Gazzetta dello Sport, of course, is a big, big, big publication. And, you know... If, I kind of get it, like, Inter in trouble financially, Romelu Lukaku uh, was, had a bit of form, but then he's lost his form again, he can't stay fit, he's, you know, he's like, it, it seems like the peak of his career is past now, they are not going to extend his loan, therefore, big man Rom is going to report back at Cobham in the summer, and it's up to Chelsea to flog him. Really, it is. I mean, really, it is, isn't it? Because he doesn't want to come back to Chelsea. Yes, you could argue Thomas Tuchel's not here, making the daddy jokes about Conte, but he doesn't want to come back to Chelsea. He just doesn't want to come back to Chelsea. That's not this. He shouldn't have come back in the first time. The fans don't want him back because of the interview. And unless this... Basically, unless our new coach is Antonio Conte, which won't happen... I can pretty say for sure. I can learn English first. I can say for certain, nearly, Conte won't be our manager. But if he came back, he'd go, right, Chilwell left wing back, James right wing back, you know, Kante and Enzo midfield, Lukaku and a strike partner up front. It'll probably make it Mudrick or something. Like, you know, anyway, that's not going to happen. So I don't know why we're even theorizing on it. But, um,. yeah, he won't want to come back. We're going to have to flog him, dude. And we're going to have to, like, it's going to be like. 40 million pounds to PSG or something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If like Mbappe gets himself out of there. Or... It, I can't see what else we do. Let me know what you think we should do with Romelu Lukaku. But that is... A big... Problem to solve. Add it to the rest. Alright. David Ornstein. My favourite journal. Journal? Jo I can't speak today. My favourite journalist. Um... Jerno, I think I was probably going for there. He's probably the best informed, well-spoken, measured, and, uh, you know, one of the head honchos at the Athletic in the UK over here covering football. Um, he's written his column, and it starts off with Chelsea stuff. So let's crack on and see what he's saying about the managerial search. But so take a deep breath, because you're going to need it for this, this sort of sobering reminder of where we are. Chelsea's season went from bad to worst on Saturday as they were deservedly beaten by Brighton and Hove Albion, a third straight defeat since naming Frank Lampard as interim manager. 
Their only remaining chance of a successful end to the campaign is via the Champions League, although opponents Real Madrid enter Tuesday's quarterfinal second leg with a 2 nil advantage. And you will have to be on some kind of special strength gear to genuinely believe, not like a fan's false hope, to genuinely believe analytically that we can do anything. Did you know, <laughs> just do anything, just do anything, you know, because we can't. Um, and that's not me being negative, I'm a positive guy, I'm gonna be positive about the future, and maybe we'll get a little bit of that from what's yet to come in this article, but yeah, come on, bro. The poor displays on the pitch put even more importance to the appointment of a permanent head coach to replace Graham Potter, who was sacked on April the 2nd. Mm. It is a process that started immediately. With the intention of learning from the mistakes made when Chelsea's new American-led ownership group rapidly installed Potter following Thomas Tuchel's exit in September and was anticipated to last for weeks rather than days. Um, yes, what the, yes, the, um, the interview process. Look, they hired Graham Potter because he was a sort of he's a hipster's coach but they did analyze him via data and then they spoke to him and they were like wow this is a really nice guy like an emotionally intensive nice guy and the data trends show he's going in the right direction but then they had this but they probably put way too many chips they gave him so much money in terms of wages and of course they gave him a five-year deal which is wild and then they backed him for a long long time they, they helped you know they stayed with him but they've obviously, when this is learning from their mistakes, they're obviously like, right, we need a bit of a knobhead to a degree. Or like, you know, have that side of them. All the best coaches are like, and, I, and by the way, like, this is like, I'm learning as well. I didn't want like the combustibility of maybe like a Mourinho and Conte, and I still don't. But maybe getting it just right with a little bit, you know, like, a lot winds me up of how disrespectful he is to how he talks to people sometimes. He always apologises. But Pep's weird and a bit of a knob sometimes. Yeah, You need this, like, energy to get into the... Uh, otherwise, I just can't see it happening. You know, so that's probably one of the many lessons they've learned. But, you know, and to be honest, like the character of Luis Enrique, Julian Nagelsmann, they've got juiced, you know what I mean? Like, the only thing with Julian Nagelsmann is... Um, you know that story when Mane shouted in his face and you sort of went a bit quiet like you can't have that in a Chelsea dressing room mate do you know what I mean the process is now at the middle stage oh we're at the middle stage there you go so we've got some we've got some like 50% downloaded we're at the middle stage and what initially began as a shortlist comprising 5 to 10 candidates I mean that's pretty loose 5 to 10 how much is it I don't know 5 to 10 you're just saying 5 or double that or up to double that. Candidates have been whittled down to just a handful of options. This is loose terminology here, because you could argue five is a handful. So this is interesting, because this was a big talking point, and I think this is probably a bit of a twist. One possibility not expected to figure out in the final reckoning is Ruben Amarin. And his photo pictured here saying, Ruben Amarin is admired as a... <laughs> Amariad <laughs> is admired, but he won't be Chelsea's manager. Which is interesting because he was a left field favorite for a lot of people. Um, he's young. He's doing really, really well. Um, we know he's got a big buyout clause from um, for his uh, for Lisbon Sporting Lisbon, so it would cost a lot. But and also they would come with risk. But he's like, you know, I know it's lame. And the kids are saying a manager needs an aura, and this dude's got aura. I promise I'll try not to say that word again. So yeah, so one possibility expected to figure, to not figure is Amarin. Um, so exploratory uh, talks did take place. Chelsea ho um, holds Sporting Lisbon and their manager in high regard. Chelsea love holding clubs in high regard, don't they? Oh, look at Brighton, they're nice. Look at the RB model. Oh, Sporting, you're like, we hold you in all such high regard. Do you remember we were just like horrible and no one liked us and now we hold people in high regards. God darn it. But he's happy at the Portuguese club and the Premier League side are focusing their attention elsewhere. So Chelsea did actually speak with Amarin when Tuchel left, underlying their long-term admiration for the 38-year-old as he continues to develop his career and build a strong reputation across the game. Hello, knock, knock, knock. Ruben, hi, Chelsea, Chelsea here. Um, just popping in to say, really admire you. 
Okay, we're going to fly back to London now. What are we doing, man? Leading this work for Chelsea are co-sporting directors Lawrence Stewart and Paul Wynn Stanley. Isn't Vivel part of this gang, them? Um, Potter's arrival was overseen by co-owners Bowley and Igbali before Stewart and Wynn Stanley joined. And the latter partnership is said to be applying greater diligence. Well, this is actually kind of their job. And this is hopefully horses for courses, the appropriate people for this job. You'd like to ruddy think. Because like, I don't know, man. Like, if this fails and they screw it up, which can happen. Football's rare you get it right, dude. Like, like it's super rare you get it right. Even with, like, these new hipster data models, like, I just hope, I just, because I said, like, on my Instagram, um, I did a Q&A on Instagram yesterday, I said I'd quite like, I said if I couldn't get Nagelsmann or Enrique, I'd quite like Amarin, uh, but I said put him on a two-year deal, I said don't give him this five-year Potter nonsense, put him on a two-year deal and give him, like, bonuses and options to extend if he qualifies for the Champions League, that kind of shit, don't get overexcited and, like, put loads of stuff on him, do you know what I mean? By the way, if you want to follow me on Instagram to catch up with me on social media, at Football Yannick. Football Yannick. All together in one word. Um, I'm really active on there lately. Doing a lot of lives. So if you want to talk to me, there's your opportunity. Should have like a Instagram widget, but we move. Um, so yeah, Stuart and Wynn Stanley are offering more due diligence or greater diligence than what Bowley and Egg Barley did when they were just sort of fruiting around. <laughs> <laughs> playing sporting directors they are conducting multiple rounds of discussions and interviews before confirming a selection that makes me feel better which will go to Bowley and Iqbali for ratification but also I hope Bowley and Iqbali now go what you think is best do you know what I mean I hope there is an element of that because they've got the ambition they've got the they want to show their faces they want to be like around it they want to go to the games love it love it mate I love that but maybe leave the football stuff up to the football guys. Hopefully these football guys are indeed football guys. Um, they are conducting multiple rounds of discussions. And yes, we ran that. Internally, the race is viewed as wide open. And with a favorite yet to emerge from the contenders. Oh, but a decision is likely in the coming weeks. So, you know, that's pretty darn interesting. We were like led to believe Nagelsmann was the favourite and then Luis Enrique, but then concerns came up about Nagelsmann um, and Luis Enrique was the first to present his case um, his um, dossier to uh, the Chelsea hierarchy and they were very impressed and then Nagelsmann I think probably come in since we knew he was due to be interviewed, certainly in, uh, invited and uh, he probably lo long boarded into the room like they didn't like that at did they? Like he was long boarding everywhere and they thought it was um uh, silly. <laughs> I mean, he's quite a silly guy, isn't he, Nagelsmann? Like, he is. He's, like, a bit of a dweeb. He wears, like, checkered, um, you know, like, waistcoats. And I'm here for it, man. I'm here. I'm the biggest dweeb around, so I'm, da I'm down. It's just, and it's just, it just, it just doesn't feel very Chelsea. But what is Chelsea anymore? It feels like Chelsea's been leveled to the ground and we're starting again for better or for worse, but seemingly worse right now. You know, the grit, of, the true grit of old, that's what Chelsea was, true grit. I mean, yeah, that's what we were. You know, we had quality, but we'd also, like, you know, a band of, like, misfits, you know, um, that was sort of brought together, you know, a bit Suicide Squad-esque. Like, it was put together by finance, but it's um, a bunch of, like, a mercenaries that bonded together, and uh, we won stuff. And that seems very... And that's... You know, firstly, that model is untenable. And secondly, it just feels like it's unachievable. It was, it's untenable long term and it's un, unachievable now, generally. You can buy as many super shiny players as you want performing in their own respective teams, leagues, countries, positions, ethoses, philosophy, attacking style, tactics, doing well, bring them to Chelsea, bang, poor. Hard reset needed. Building from the ground up, you want to do this analytical data-led model, Bowley and Iqbali, you really are going to have to start from the bottom. And not just the bottom, dig in the ground and build foundations, new foundations. 
because it, I was gonna, I was saying it might get worse before it gets better. I think it's got worse now. When well, it has got worse now, I think it can't get any worse. Famous last words. That's the one thing, isn't it? People say, "What do you expect next season?" I said this in the Instagram Q and A. You know, like, will it get better next season? And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> I mean, like, it has to, brother. We're eleventh out of all the cups, I'm getting touched up by Madrid. Yes, it will get better because it has to. Like it, the odds are like one onto a hundred, it will get better. Like you know, tenth is better than eleventh. It will get better. Hot dog. Let me know what you think. Comment down below about your favorite managerial favorite, rather, and uh, what do you think about Lukaku, etc., etc., etc. Thank you for liking the video and subscribing to this channel. Make sure you turn on the bell if you are if you are subscribed. Yeah, if you're subscribed or subscribing. Provided the button is clicked, make sure the other one is, the bell. Keep it locked, because I will react to all the news as and when it comes out. And uh, I love you very much. Peace.